two and a half years of reviewing bikes for bicycling, and this might actually be the first road bike that I want to keep. Hey everyone, Bobby here, test editor at Bicycling, and this is the Specialized Athos. You might think that this is just nothing special. Round tubes, round handlebar, normal stem, nothing's integrated, nothing's aero, and really that's it. This is just a road bike. Long ago in a faraway land, a road bike was just a road bike. There weren't marginal gains, there wasn't aero is everything, but then things changed. Bike design went off the rails, everything had to be aerodynamic, race bikes couldn't have round tubes anymore. Well, they could if they're climbing bikes, but now the climbing bikes are aero too. So what do we make of this bike? Now Specialized goes out of their way to talk about this bike as being one for riders, not a race bike, but it's not an endurance bike. It's not built for comfort. It is very comfortable, but it has the same stiffness to weight targets as the Tarmac. So why isn't this a race bike? Well, it's not aero. Five years ago, this probably just would have been a Tarmac. And in fact, it really resembles the Tarmac SL5, which is when Specialized first introduced their rider first geometry. So this might strike you as odd that the brand who gave us the new Tarmac which is touted as the one bike to rule them all, would now be trying to sell us a bike that's not aero, no integration, nothing normal. What the Athos represents is the recognition that the best bike for racers isn't always the best bike for riders. And so you have all the performance that Specialized has figured out with various iterations of the Tarmac and the Venge, but they put it into a much more user-friendly package. So what makes this bike so user-friendly? Well, let's start with the cockpit. Integrated handlebars look really cool. They look slick, they hide all the cables, they hide all the brake lines, but they're a pain in the ass to work with. Most of us that aren't racing aren't gonna care so much about shaving a few watts off of our weekend rides, but it is gonna make life a hell of a lot more easy for us if we wanna tweak our fit, change the stem, change the handlebar. We can do that on our own, or it can be done in 10 minutes at a shop. You don't have to disconnect brake lines. You don't have to have an in-depth understanding of how the whole ecosystem of the bike works just to change a stem. Besides the cockpit, one of the other great user-friendly aspects of this bike is the bottom bracket. It has a threaded BSA bottom bracket that's easy to service and easy to maintain. After figuring out the ride quality, Specialized had to figure out what tube shapes were gonna give them that ride quality. And since they weren't concerned with conforming to the UCI's regulations, they were free to use any shape they wanted. But in the end, it came back to a shape that really is not revolutionary at all. As it turns out, round tubes work. As a result of relying on tube shape instead of carbon layup for the ride qualities, Specialized was able to use far less carbon fiber in producing the frame. Less material equals less weight. The end result, in this case, is a 58 centimeter road bike that weighs just over 14 pounds. Now, when we talk about this 14 pound road bike, we can't ignore that we've got some crazy light wheels on here. The new Reval Alphanus CLX wheels are ridiculously light. You can race this bike, and in fact, you can even race it in UCI sanctioned events. It is approved for use by the UCI. Now, this build falls below the 6.8 kilo weight limit, but there's a lot of bikes out there in the World Tour that fall below that weight limit, and you can put heavier wheels on. Heavier wheels are really easy to find, and you'll hit that weight target. The S-Works Athos is rounded out with a Shimano Durace DI2 group set with a dual-sided power meter, Reval carbon seat post, and an S-Works body geometry power saddle. So there you have it. That's the S-Works Athos. Now, let's get out on the road and see how this perfectly normal road bike rides. One of the things that I was wondering about when Specialized released the Athos that has almost none of the features we've come to know about modern road bikes is this snake oil. Are they trying to repackage some old stuff and sell it to us as something revolutionary and new? Short answer is no. They've stripped away all of the unnecessary stuff that frankly people who aren't racing at the sharp end of the peloton don't really need. Normally what we're seeing is we're seeing endurance bikes have this level of user friendliness but then as soon as you get into the high performing race bikes 
they've got all the complicating factors like integrated seat mass, you've got aero handlebars. Those things don't add to the quality of the ride. They may shave some watts off the drag, they may make you go a little bit faster, but in terms of enjoyment of the ride, quality of the bike ride itself, they don't add anything. They've given us a plain road bike that's just frankly awesome. Specialized was very clear when they presented us with this bike that they weren't trying to reinvent the wheel in terms of fit and handling because they have something so good with the tarmac. And in fact, they wanted to mimic the tarmac both in fit and feel, and they nailed it. This bike has that silky smooth, reliable feel that we've come to know and love from the tarmac. And in fact, it's several pounds lighter than the tarmac. But even being several pounds lighter, it's still rock solid stiff, like you expect from a racing bike. So again, we come back to this, is it a race bike? Is it not a race bike thing? And the reality is, of course, if you want to race it, you can race it. A race bike is just a label. The fact that Specialized is trying to separate out the Athos as a bike for riders and not racers, I think is just a function of the fact that we like to put bikes, especially road bikes, in narrow little boxes these days. But the Athos doesn't fit cleanly into a nice little box. It harkens back to a simpler time in road bikes where a road bike was just a road bike and it was what you did with it. To me, the Athos is really exciting because in the last handful of years, Specialized and a lot of other major brands have put the bulk of their R&D muscle behind creating race bikes, creating the fastest bike that they possibly can. The elephant in the room is that we're still talking about a $12,500 bike, but we're hoping that this is a sign of things to come and that Specialized and hopefully other major brands will start putting their technical know-how into creating some normal road bikes again. And sure, there's always a place for the race bikes because frankly, people are still racing, but there are a lot of people that simply want a great road bike. So what do you think? Is this old stuff repackaged in a shiny new box? Or is it actually a step in a whole new direction? Tell us what you think in the comments and be sure to subscribe to Bicycling for more videos.